Hello friends, this is lesson number 50 in the series of criticism and literary theories in English. Now among the structuralist thinker, the next we have that is Mikhail Bakhtin. Mikhail Bakhtin. He was a Russian scholar and born in the year 1895 and died 1975. He is a very important writer in structuralism. In fact, his works inspired the practitioner of Marxism, semiotics and structuralism. Even in the previous year papers in the UGC net exams, we have several questions asked from his works and the concepts. So first we have the work that is Problems of Dostoevsky's Art. Problems of Dostoevsky's Art published in the year 1929. There are two facts related to this work that we should understand. The first that uh, the initial title for this work was the problems of uh, Dostoevsky's creative art and it was published then in 1929 and later in the 1960s in the year 1963 he republished this work with the name Problems of Dostoevsky's Poetics and the second fact is regarding Dostoevsky's. Who is Dostoevsky? In Russian literature we have a famous name that is Fyodor Dostoevsky. He is also a very important writer in Russian literature. When we go through the Russian writers then we shall consider him. But for the moment you can remember that Fyodor Dostoevsky from Russia, he is a writer and his three important works, Crime and Punishment. The next is Brother Karmazov and one more important work that is The Notes from the Underground. Okay, these are the works written by Fyodor Dostoevsky, but we are not discussing him here. It is only for the reference that his name appeared and I am telling you these names. Anyway, in this work we are discussing Mikhail Bakhtin's work that is Problems of Dostoevsky's Art and in this work we have several theories so the first is theory of dialogism dialogism from the basic word dialogue we have this word dialogism now what is dialogue dialogue is a conversation between two persons when they are two speakers and opposite to it we have monologue in monologue we have only one speaker and whatever the one speaker that particular he is telling us that is assumed as a truth but when there is a dialogue now we have two speakers at least and they are giving their own perspective now we don't have any idea that who is telling us the truth and who is not so as a conclusion we can draw that uh, with monologue we get only one perspective of the reality and with dialogue we get at least two different perspective of the reality two different speakers speaking now take any work in where we have one speaker and he is telling us something we are forced to assume that whatever he is saying that is truth so there is only one simple truth but when we have two persons talking about same incident in different versions then there is difficulty for us to understand or to get any idea that who is speaking truth so that's where there is no certainty of the truth in other words we can say that the truth is negotiated and then he takes the concept to novel and poetry in poetry we have simple one monologue where the speaker is saying something and we are forced to assume that is truth but in prose in novels what we see that there are multiple speakers and they are giving their own perspective in novel fiction usually it happens that multiple voices speaking multiple versions of the truth so having shown the importance of dialogues in novel, he discuss the works of Fyodor Dostoevsky.
I have already given you the names of the three works by Fyodor Dostoevsky and one of them is very important that is Crime and Punishment. And in Crime and Punishment we have different characters and all these different characters are presenting their own reality. If you get a chance to go through this text of Crime and Punishment then you will realize that the different characters they have their own truth to present. The central character Raskolnikov he has his own reality where he committed a murder and he thinks that he is right in committing that murder and then his family members, his sister, his mother they have their own reality and then there is a, an inspector who is inquiring the case he too presents a different world so this is the idea of dialogism where we have multiple voices or multiple speaker and they have their own version of the truth and this is the speciality of the works of Fyodor Dostoevsky that when you read the text you won't be able to realize that which character is speaking the truth or which character is right and sometimes there are debates between these characters and we cannot really judge that who is right in his position so this is the idea of dialogism so Mikhail Bakhtin talks about uh, monologue and dialogue for monologue he has the term monologia or monologia and for dialogue he has the term dialogism and this is given in the work the problems of Dostoevsky's art the next concept is of polyphony and this concept is also given in the same book that is problems of Dostoevsky's art and this concept is quite similar to the dialogism where we have multiple voices speaking their own truth and now here Mikhail Bakhtin is saying that uh, these multiple voices when never merge into a single truth that is polyphony mostly it happens in novel fiction that we have multiple voices but even when there is no point of view from the writer even the author is just leaving them at their own and he is not merging them together to present a one single truth that is polyphony or in other words we can say that the author is not presenting his own perspective rather he is presenting the perspective of the characters the different characters but there is not any perspective from the author's side mostly in the works we see that the author is presenting his views sometimes as an omniscient narrator or sometimes through any particular character maybe hero or maybe the central character but in polyphony the author is allowing the characters to have their say and he is not presenting his own perspective we as a reader see the plurality of the consciousness of the truth and even of the realities so this is the concept of the polyphony earlier we discussed the dialogism where we have multiple voices from the multiple characters and in polyphony the same thing is here but adding to that that writer is not providing one single truth rather the writer is allowing the multiple truth to come to the surface and hide his own perspective now moving on the next uh, work we have that is the Rebellious and his world Rebellious and his world published in the year 1968 and in this work we have the concept of carnivalesque what is carnivalesque the root word is carnival means something like a festival where all are happy irrespective of their class or social or economic condition they all enjoy the similar sort of happiness in the western culture we see the carnival where the people are appearing together and they are wearing masks and enjoying having fun there may be the people from the poor class or maybe from the upper or richer class there is no distinction among them that is carnival or in other words we can say we see equality there and only happiness so Mikhail Bakhtin talks about the literary work that shows no class conflict only humor and happiness without any worldly rules and he says that in that sort of situation there is a free interaction among the people and even the behavior of the people may become eccentric and and inappropriate 
because in that sort of situation when there are no checks the people are free to interact then you see the people shouting loud or maybe laughing a lot and expressing themselves in whichever they want further mikhail bakhtin says that uh, we see the delusion of the hierarchy that we exist in this society so it can be considered as the uh, reunification of the heaven and hell high and low great and small or even like clever and stupid and further he adds that uh, even the rules of r- religious sacredness are removed from such situation and the things like blasphemy obscenity are considered acceptable since there are no checks no social cultural check and everything is accepted as a freedom the prominent example of uh, that sort of a novel is uh, william shakespeare has written a work that is a midsummer night's dream a midsummer night's dream in that we have that sort of situation where everyone is free and enjoying the festival now the next concept we have that is of heteroglossia heteroglossia he wrote a work and the name is discourse in the novel discourse in the novel and published in the year 1934 35 and in that work we have an essay and the name is dialogic imagination four essays the title is dialogic imagination four essays and in this work we have this concept of heteroglossia so it has something in common with the earlier concepts like dialogism and polyphony first we take this word heteroglossia hetero means of a difference and glossia and this word can be taken from the other word you may have read this word in the books glossary so glossia means the language or the words so different voices or multiple style of discourse they are considered as heteroglossia one key difference between dialogism and heteroglossia we see that in dialogism we have multiple or at least two different viewpoints but in heteroglossia we have the two different type of language variation or the diversity of the languages in a single speech or in a single text to understand heteroglossia in a better way we can take one example given by mikhail bakhtin himself in this work he says that uh, suppose there is an illiterate peasant means a person from the working class when he is going to the church and offering prayer to the god his language would be entirely different to the language that he will speak when he talks to his family members that could be a local dialect and further he may emulate another high class dialect when talking to high class people or government authority so there can be a clear difference in the tone style or even in the vocabulary so when the same sort of thing is applied in a single text in a book in a work when you see that the multiple style of speech that is termed as heteroglossia so as we had monologia and dialogism similar way we have heteroglossia and opposite to it we have monoglossia the formal and the informal language when we use at the same time in a single context that can also be considered as the example of heteroglossia so as a conclusion we see that any character using different types of dialogues or ways in different situations that is termed as heteroglossia now moving on the next work we have that is speech genres and other late essays speech genres and other late essays published in the year 1986 in this work we have his views on different speech genres and also the it contains the collection of some of his essays now we come to the end of this lesson and before we do this there are several questions which were asked in the previous year net exams so we shall discuss them one by one first the term heteroglossia who has coined this we have mikhail bakhtin and what is the meaning of this term it means 
multiple voices in a text. The next question, the term Cardiovalesque. This term is given by Mikhail Bakhtin in which work and that is the Rebellias and his world. The next question, the concept of Carnivalesque. From the given four options, the correct one is liberation from the prevailing truth and established order. Emphasize on play, parody, pleasure, suspension of all hierarchical ranks and orders. So this is the concept of Carnivalesque. Where we have liberation means we, have, we are free from the truth, the established truth that is in the society and also of the social order or any sort of a hierarchy that is existing in the society and fully emphasis on play, parody, music, pleasure, that's all. The next question, the concept of polyphony is given by Mikhail Bakhtin. The next, the term heteroglossia and it was correctly matched with the option a term to describe the variety of language and voices within a novel. So in a novel fiction we see the different variety of the language and also the multiple voices. And then one last question that is again to define what is heteroglossia and there is one option and it contains the long definition. And what is this? Heteroglossia functions in a novel in alliance with its stylistic system incorporating multiple voices inscribed in social language and differentiated components of writer's ideological position. Now take what is the meaning of this statement. See, a novel in alliance with stylistic system incorporating multiple voices. So stylistic system of the language and multiple voices we see and differentiated components of writer's ideological position means there is no position of the writer's ideology. So that is heteroglossia. So that's all for this lesson. What we have discussed, we have discussed multiple concepts given by the famous Russian structuralist thinker Mikhail Bakhtin. The first as a quick recap, we take uh, the first was of a dialogism which was given in the work Problems of Dostoevsky's Art. Remember, it was initially given the title as uh, Problems of Dostoevsky's Creative Art and then in the next edition in the year 1963, it was given the title Problems of Dostoevsky's Poetics. And in that we have the concept of the dialogism of multiple voices means multiple characters in a work presenting multiple truths then the concept of polyphony polyphony is the concept adding to the previous one that there is no single voice given by the author rather he is hiding his own perspective and he is presenting the all different realities presented by different characters then there is the work Rebellias and his world and in that we have the concept of carnivalesque. From the word carnival we have where we have all happiness. No social order, no hierarchy, no system but the people are free as they are in any carnival. The next is discourse in the novel. In that work we had an essay, Dialogic Imagination, for essays and in that work we have the concept of heteroglossia which means that uh, the multiple voices and multiple language variety in a single text. So that is the end of this lesson. Thanks a lot for watching this video and have a nice day.